Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make changes in one pivot table without affecting another pivot table. Now, what does that mean? Let's say, for example, we have these two pivot tables. If I select this page filter up here and I just want category, category 1 here to show up and I want a category maybe 2 to show up here, you'll see that it affects that change. That kind of looks like these two pivot tables are very different. But in reality, they're the same because they're sharing the same pivot table cache. Now to see how this applies when we're doing something else, let me clear that filter here and clear this filter here. What happens here is, so it looked like if I made changes to these two separate tables, they are independent, but they actually are not. So a way to see that they are dependent on the same source is if I group data. So let's say I group this data right click, click group, and I'll group this one by month, click OK, right, and see both of them have been affected. So if I go back, if I go to the second pivot table here, right click and select group, and I want to do this by quarters instead, and click OK, you'll notice it does it for both of them. It doesn't separate out. I can't have one that's months and I can't have one that is quarters. And that's because they're sharing the same pivot cache so what is a pivot cache? Well, when you create a pivot table, you have your source data here, and the actual output you see is your pivot table. But when well, the background, what Excel is doing is it's creating a pivot cache. And this pivot cache holds the source data. In essence, it's actually a copy of the source data, and it's used to create the pivot table. The reason why it's doing that is because it's in memory and it aids in faster calculations to create the pivot table. That's why whenever you change data in your source data, you have to go into the pivot table and click refresh to refresh the data in there. It's because it's pulling from the pivot cache. So what's happening here is this is all coming from the same pivot cache. And to see that, let's go into uh, the, the VBA editor. What I'll do is press the Alt F11 key to bring up the VBA editor. And in the immediate window here, I'll just type question mark active workbook dot pivot cache. I'll just tab because it selected that one and dot or period count. And I'll just tab, All right? Press enter and it'll tell me that there is one pivot cache. If we wanted to make it where we would see this in months and maybe this in quarters, there's two ways we can do this. I'll show you two ways. One way is we can add an extra row to the source data of this one to kind of trick it to make it look like it's there's two pivot caches. I can go under Analyze, go under Change Source Data, and in the source data for that first pivot table, I'll just add an extra row there, 100. Type OK. And now this is showing in dates. It kind of reverted back to dates. Let's group them. Right click, group, and we'll do this in months. Whoops, click months, click OK. And now you see that blank, right? There's, there's a blank there. And we can just uh, unselect the blank and uncheck that. Click OK, and we have a blank. And now whenever we do any changes here, it doesn't affect it. You can see that my changes here do not affect that table. And the reason why is we have two pivot caches now. So if I bring up the VBA editor window again, Alt F11, let's delete that. Go back there, press enter. Now you see that there are two pivot table caches there. All right, let's close this. Now that was the first way we do it, but if we didn't want that extra row there, let's uh, delete this. Right click, delete. And to make sure that we don't have two pivot tables, two, two pivot table caches, let's bring up the VBA window again. And let's see if, let's see how many pivot table caches we have. Press enter, we just have one now. Close this window, or, or I'll delete this so we can run it again. Close this window, and let's go back to my source data. I need to use the keyboard shortcut Alt D P. It's going to bring up the pivot table and pivot chart wizard. Click next. I'll set the defaults. Click next. And my range of data is A1 to F99. Click next. And this is where it's important. It's going to ask me, do I want my new report to be based on the same data as the existing report? Do we want it to use the same uh, pivot 
uh, cache. No, we don't. Right? We don't. We want two reports to be separate. So I'll click no. And let's put it on the existing worksheet here on sheet three. Go to F3, finish, and I'll start to populate it out. I'll put in the date here, and it's, Excel's nice enough to already uh, populate months, so I'll just remove that date there, and go and put quantity down here, and maybe category up here, and change this to the same format. So the report layout is tabular. So whenever I change it, so I've changed stuff here, and you notice it's different. So if I change this, and I ungroup it, and I make, maybe I just want the full dates now, right? I ungroup it, it doesn't make any changes here because they're separate pivot table caches. And to see that, let's go back into the VBA editor, Alt F11, and press Enter here, and now you see that it has two uh, pivot caches. So that's the way that we can make changes on one pivot table without affecting changes on another pivot table. Now, for the most part, this generally just occurs when we group data or there's calculated item and calculated fields. And you have analysis on multiple pivot tables, but you want to kind of separate out the view of them. So generally speaking, if you're doing any kind of filtering, or category from the page uh, filters or columns. It doesn't really affect you too much, but once you, once you use grouping on the dates or if you're using calculated items, then it affects you because when you make changes to one, it'll make changes to the other. So that's the way that we can make changes to one pivot table without affecting another. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.